Hey guys and gals. I had gotten a uh, question the other day on my YouTube that I thought was a really good one. And I just want to show you a little bit here. Um, it's It was 100 degrees. It's still 100 degrees in there. The fans are off because the sun is not really hitting the, the uh, kiln anymore today. But just so you know, like I have my blue, red, and white jacket on, and it's kind of cool. It's only 58, but that thing says 100 in there, so it was bright sunny today. Um, what I wanted to talk about, with the, the question that I got was, why do I cut the top end off, or why do I cut the bottom end off of the log when I go to shorten it? So I want to talk to you about that a little bit. Let me get the camera stand here. Okay guys, so I have another log on here. I want to see what you're seeing. There we go. I have another log on here that I'm going to be cutting. I'm not going to cut it now. It's 7 o'clock at night and I'm getting kind of wore out for the day because I was doing a lot of uh, gardening and stuff like that. But what I want to tell you is whenever you put a log on the sawmill, if you haven't looked at the entire log, you're actually making a big mistake. You really need to roll the log, look at the log, and know what you got. Now this doesn't have to take a lot of time. I'm not asking you to look at it with a, you know, a microscope. I'm asking you to just make sure you've looked at it. So, just to give you an idea, like when I look at this log, I can roll this log all the way around, and there's some marks in it from moving it. But there doesn't look like there was any branches in it anywhere, okay? Or, uh, you know, not knots anywhere that I can actually see. And right about there looks like about the straightest part of the log. This end here could probably come up about an inch, so I'll bring that up. But that's what I normally do, and you guys normally see that. But what we're talking about here in the question about which end should I cut off, now just hold on a second. I'm going to grab a tape measure. I'm going to measure this log here. I'll actually measure it from here down. Okay, so if I measure it from here down, now I need to turn this log a little bit more because there's a bevel on this one side here from when they cut the log. So the bevel is like at eight foot eight and I'm gonna cut that down to eight foot three okay so here's the thing which way or, or how do I go about cutting this log let me just put it down here for a second so here are the things that I want to look at if this log was 12 foot long and I wanted eight footers for in the kiln I would still cut four feet off of it somehow Right now, um, with this at eight foot three, I'm only gonna lose a foot of this log. But either way, you know, which end do I wanna lose it from? So here's, here's what, how I look at this. The first thing I look at is, is the log straight? And this log is pretty straight. The second thing I look at is, are there knots on it? You know, branches that are broken off or cut off. And there are none on this whole log. Okay, so it, it looks straight, the branches are, are off of it, they're not, they're, I mean there are not any branches on it to see. So to me, I could say, all right, there's like a 50% or more chance that this is going to be a nice piece of wood here. Okay, so I look at it, I decide whether it has to go up or down or whatever, and I can do all that. But as far as cutting it off, you know, which end do I want to cut off? Well, here's the thing. If I always cut the small end off, I'm increasing the size of the cant a little bit. Because um, if I check this, just to give you an idea, this end of the log here is uh, 9.5 by 10.5. So if I come up just a, another foot, the log ends up being like 10 and a half by 11 and a half, which is another inch bigger. So to get the bigger boards, you'd want to cut off of that end up there 
this way. The problem with that is on this particular log, we have this bevel here. Let me just show you that. We have this bevel right there that sort of stops me from having the size, you know, log that I would want to have. So, in this case, you can only figure from the end of the bevel to the other end. Now, the way this one, this log here is a foot down here, which is right there, because of this only being a nine foot log, that, or nine foot three, this will end up being good if I cut it there. But, like I'm saying, the best way to cut the log is to be able to cut it from the short end towards the big end, because what that's going to do is give you a bigger dimension of cant. And let's face it, one inch doesn't sound alike, but when you've cut a hundred logs, you're talking about a lot of lumber, okay, that you could have maybe gained. I know for myself, because I'm particular about eight footers and, and certain sizes of lumber, I do lose pretty much, but I'm not into, this business is not, um, it's not paying for me to live. I've, I'm retired, so I have an income. I don't need this as an income. I just like doing it. And the point is, is if you cut from the small end down, you increase the size of the can. Now that sounds like the best way to go. But what if on this log here, we were to say like maybe right, I don't know, maybe right up in here, there would be a branch that was cut off. And then there was another one maybe somewhere else down here. We would say, okay, well, if, if I cut that foot off here and I can get rid of a branch, that's a knot that's going to be in the wood that I may not have. So I'd rather cut it off here. Now in this one, because it looks good, and remember something, you, you cannot tell what the inside of these um, logs look like until you cut them open. I don't care who you are. Okay, you can get a good guess, like I can say this one looks like it's going to be a good log because there's no branches or nothing on it, and it might be. I mean, that would probably be the guess of everybody that came here and looked at this who had been, you know, some experience in milling. But anyway, what I'm saying is the, the best way is to cut from the small end. If you have knots um, at the big end and you can get that cut out of there, and end up with a not free log, that's what you're after. So you're after not free. First you're after the biggest size can't. Then you're after <coughs> not free, okay? And according to the, if there's a bend in it, sometimes the bend is down by the stump, sometimes the bend is five foot up. The bend can be anywhere. There's nowhere telling to tell me where the bend might be. Because this looks fairly straight, and I'm not gonna worry about any little bend in it, it looks fairly straight, I'm good with it. If there was a bend in it, I'd try to get the bend out. So if the bend's down there, maybe if I cut that off, I'd get rid of the bend. If the bend's up here, I might be able to cut this off. So that's another thing that has something to do with it. Which, which end do I cut off? Because if you've watched my videos, all I gotta do is look at where the, the garbage is. If it's up here by the building, up at this end, you know I cut the small end off. If the stump, or if the log has a piece rolled off down on that end, you know I cut the big end off. And it all depends on what I'm saying to you. And the other thing, or I should say probably the last thing, is are there any cracks in it? Now I'm not talking about little tiny heat cracks, you know, from it drying, something like this. I'm not talking about things like this. I'm talking about major cracks that are going to determine what the overall log is going to be like okay those little cracks that are inside that log right there that you're looking at are not going to run through the entire log they're only going to be in there so many inches and that's what i'm after so anyway i thought i would answer that question with a video because i think it's an important and it's a good question as to why i choose to make certain cuts so like I say, I'm not going to cut this log tonight. I just put it on there for this purpose. I'll be cutting this one probably tomorrow morning. Have a good one, guys. Bye.